Our base 10 number system is broken into parts called periods. And the first one we're going to talk about is the one we've been dealing with in the previous two videos, and that's called the ones period. Here is a model of the ones period. It's broken into three places, the ones place, the tens place, and the hundreds place. And most numbers that we deal with in our daily lives all live here in the ones period. From people's ages, days of the week, calendars, time, simple counting. Most times when we're dealing with numbers, they're going to be in this ones period, which is why we're beginning here. Later, as you're introduced to the thousands and the millions and the billions periods and beyonds, we don't deal with numbers very often way up there. But we have them because sometimes we do need to talk about numbers that big. Let's take the number 148 and break it apart into the three different places that we have in the ones period. So the digit 1 here in the hundreds place stands for 100. The 4 in the tens place stands for 40. And the digit 8 in the ones place stands for 8. And what's important to remember here, we're going to get more to this later in another video, is that as you move from the ones place to the tens place, the tens place is 10 times bigger. And as you move from the tens place to the hundreds, the hundreds place is 10 times bigger than the 10, and 100 times bigger than the ones place. This is the number 148 written in what we call standard form. In standard form, the easiest way to remember it, it's the most common way we look at numbers. We write down the digits, we put them in the proper places, and it stands for 148. If I were to break it up down using cubes, I would take 8 cubes to show that there's 8 ones. To show the four tens, I would put in four ten bars. So right now we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 8. And finally, I could take a 100 block. Now this block is important. I haven't talked about this one yet in the previous videos. It stands for 10 of these 10 bars, like I said before, and it stands for 100 of these cubes. I could take 100 of these cubes, move them in here, and that's how much it would take to fill it up. Okay, so that's 148 cubes to show the number 148. If you have cubes, let's play with them for a little bit. If you don't have any, you can sketch these on a piece of paper. All right, so I'm going to take our ones period again, which I showed you earlier. Here's your hundreds, tens, and ones. And I first showed them to you with the boxes at the same size. So you can kind of see that the places all belong to the ones period. But now I'm going to change their sizes a little bit so that the blocks can better fit inside them. Watch. You can see the ones place, it's pretty narrow because I'm only going to have up to nine ones cubes in here at any one time. Because once I get ten I make a tens block. The tens place is a little bigger because I can have ten of those long rods in here, or nine of them. Once I get ten, I make a hundreds. And I can't fit a hundred of those in here, but I can stack them on top of each other to show you what they would look like. So now we're going to build the number 148 using blocks. And when I have students do this, they almost always start with the hundreds blocks because they like to do the bigger ones. It doesn't really matter if you start with the ones and then the tens and then the hundreds. It's not significant for what we're doing today. So if we take 100 block and place it in the hundreds place, that represents 100. And then we'll put four tens blocks in the tens place to show the number 40. And we're going to put eight ones blocks in the ones place to show the eight. So there's our number 148 in standard form. And here's our number 148 using blocks. Time to play at home again. So if you've got those blocks, get them ready. And if not, you can sketch all these out on a piece of paper. First exercise is take the number 273 in standard form and go ahead and place hundreds, tens, and ones blocks into their place to represent that number. It should look like this. With 200 blocks, see how I stacked them, seven tens, and three ones. Next problem. The number 405. There it is in standard form.
replace the blocks. See, I've got four 100 blocks for the 400. Notice I don't have any blocks in the tens place because there's no tens. So no blocks there, and I have five ones. Last problem this way, and then we're going to switch it. The number 350. There's another zero there. We would put 300 blocks, five tens, and this time no ones because there's nothing there. All right. Let's go the other way around. I'm going to give you the blocks, and you're going to try to write the number in standard form. So what number is represented here? Hmm, count the blocks in each place. It's 200, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 265. If you got that right, good job. If you didn't, be a little more careful with this one. Now we've got a certain number of blocks in the hundreds place, some blocks in the tens place. There is nothing in the ones place. How are we going to deal with that? Hmm. What digit do we use to show that there's nothing in a place? That's right. We use a zero. No ones. If we don't write that zero there, people are going to think the number is 52. And this is way more than 52. It's 520. So remember, if you have nothing in a place, you show that in a standard number by writing a zero. That's all we have today. There's going to be more coming on place value in our next video.